Sometimes I think back on the things I didn't do, but I wish I had. And sometimes I think back on the things I shouldn't have done, but I did them anyway. But it made me who I am today. Okay, I'll take it. Even the floors are slanted. Maybe it's me. And this apartment is so small, I feel like I live in a shoebox. From my window, I can see the avenue where you can buy anything, anyone, at any time for a small price. Smoke, smoke, smoke glass, beauty's coke, dealers murmur. China white, China downtown white, brown, 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 they say, as packets are passed with a handshake. Their clients are mannequins, half standing in the snow, sun, rain. Their bones aligned with tattered clothes, with small speckled wrists where a pulse once was. Boys with pretty eyeliners sway down the sidewalk in high-heeled shoes, while spectral figures with punched-out teeth suck on found cigarette stubs. So you ask me, why am I living here? It's to dance. Nothing more than that. You see, dance has drawn me in with a magnetic force that never wanes. I can be everything, day to day, that I never was. Majestic, powerful, beautiful. I can run, jump, leap, twirl like an eternal child. Only happy this time. And defy gravity like Peter Pan. So every day I study at Palatial Studios with instructors that have heavy Russian accents. One grand plié. And a hard pounding cane. Once the pianist strikes the first chord, I'm transported. Ballet is my zen, my rescue, my Shangri-La. Once home again, it all shatters. A prostitute is arguing with her pimp. She screams, there's a thud, <gasps> and then a deadening silence. Sometimes in the morning, blood and bullet holes decorate my foyer with a super mopping ferociously. Next week, there'll be a clamor of men on top of my roof, the heavy metal door, until the chains pop from their foldings. Their footsteps will become louder and closer until they're right outside my door. I can call 911, but they'll never come. I'll trip over my mattress, which lies on the floor. I'll lock my triple locks triple. I'll barricade my windows with my chairs and call the better late than never super. He'll explain in the aftermath. It's the wind, must be your imagination. Oh really? Does the wind have menacing voices and heavy footsteps? Maybe it does in my new neighborhood. Yo, Eddie, give me the gun. There's only a children's lock on my apartment door. It comes from a toy store where they also sell miniature pirates treasure chests. My agent tells me that blue is a good color for me because it, it brings out the color of my eyes, which are brown, but that my hair's too long and that my dress looks like I just got out of bed without him. Is that supposed to be funny? Go home, fix your hair, come back tomorrow, and please wear something different. Wear something different like this. Or like this. I call mom. I think he likes me. I have another chance. Don't be so sure of that. Wise mom says. So I go the next day and I wear my best outfit. And my agent says, You look like you dress for a mafia funeral. But let's read anyway. And he hands me a script for a claustropedic mattress. Good girl. You sound believable. Too bad you don't look believable. I'd like to help, but you're not a good fit. What about a stocking commercial? You'd be perfect. You really think that I could do it? Sure you can. And he gives me a hug. A very too long, too close. Big hug. Um, let me take a peek at your legs. I take a, a circus showgirl pose. Ta-da!
Nice. And can you hike that skirt up a little more so? And I do so. Do you have cellulite? I'll have to check, because that could be a problem for the clients. Thank God I did, because I would have been embarrassed to go any further. I never thought I'd be thankful for cellulite. Besides, he really shouldn't be navigating his way up to my stay out of there! Lolling? Acting is complete abandonment. You can't be a good actress if you're a closed person. Consider me like your uncle. This is all harmless. But push me away and there'll be no work. I froze. I think I blinked as he walked me out. Out in the hallway were a half a dozen other actresses wearing Kelly Green, just waiting to take my place. I used to go-go dance with one of them. They all had cute hair, white patent leather boots, and bright smiles, and probably no cellulite. El, listen, these cellulite creams are really, really great. Uh, just don't put them in your hair. I get an agent. I walked past them in my black pumps and polyester. That was my first and last agent. I had to get away from all this craziness. And I decided to take a nice walk on Broadway. Hey, Blue Eyes, can you spare 50? Yeah, you're such an actress. You should be on Broadway. Fat ass. Hey, you are on Broadway. Is my ass really that fat? I stopped by in the desert to buy fashion magazines, and my camel leaves without me. It was time to make money. On Route 46, there was a dark club. We women are dancing to outdated rock and roll on the jukebox. Sledgehammer it blares. Someone takes hand cream and squirts it on her thighs, and the dollars keep coming. New Jersey stardom. Who needs Broadway? This is easier, faster, if you don't mind, secondhand smoke and the sleazy clientele. In this land of go-go, you're a queen. Aphrodite, a cheap trick. You can send money back to your home country, pay for school, support your drug habit. But for me, it's all for my art. Here in go-go, all they appreciate is a Barbie doll look. I learned that the hard way when my leather leopard bikini got upstaged by Little Bo Peep. Really. And for better tips, stop doing jazz dance combinations a customer suggests and do favors under the table like the others. The guys tell me, <laughs> Your body's like a Maserati. You, you, you should be on the seafood menu. Muscles with sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Every day I go to go-go, I fear being stabbed, raped, robbed in that order, then tossed into the marshes like an awful basketball shot. On Tuesday evening, when everyone is drinking special Russian quaaludes and Pear Tuesday daiquiris, I dance like a good temptress should. My men give me applause and love notes which read, Meet me later. I can get you good health insurance if you marry me. I change my outfit in the dressing room, which used to be a closet. 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off. I cry, my mascara streaking long rivers on my cheek that I wish I could paddle away on. Just when I can't stand it any longer, management asks, can I work late? You gotta work late tonight. Cotton candy can't make it in. Sorry. I say, the buses stop running early. I'll have no way of getting home, I explain. Yeah, whatever. Can you arrange a ride for me? Uh, uh, we'll figure it out. Okay. I'll work late. Dance hard, girl. Do your thing. It's 3.30 a.m. And everyone's cashing out and, and packing up. And my boss forgets his promise. And I'm stranded. A hot dog chef offers to drive me back to the city. As we exit out the back way towards his blue Chevy, 
he mumbles. Did anyone see you leave with me? No, and instinctively, I said, well, of course the boss did. I can't have anyone know I'm driving you home because I'm married. I don't want people to get the wrong idea. I stay quiet. He continues. You know, when I was in Nam, I was a sniper. It was my job to shoot the calm from the towers. It was fun, like a video game. My highway ride home shifts into second gear towards a vacant factory outlet. But this isn't the way home, I say, and slowly roll the window down. Why are you rolling down the window? No one out here is going to hear you scream. I feel nauseous, I say. A lone truck passes, and I count the sporadic cars which gleam by, hoping to flare one down. Their few headlights beam down our desolate path and disappear. My hope disappears. Lights glimmer from the bridge in a distant backdrop, a Coney Island appeal. We're on a bumpum car ride. You know, he says. Yeah, I don't like you. Thought you were a nice girl, but you just like all the rest. And then he said, Didn't fool me. You live in a shit neighborhood. Figures. Couldn't pay me to live there. You're right, I say, trying to bond with him. It's depressing. This job's depressing. The city's depressing. My life's depressing. I know you get it. And I can't seem to get out no matter how, how, how hard I try. I'm trapped. Ever been to California? That's my escape dream. Never been. Go anywhere at this point. Me too, I add. Yeah, somewhere quiet. Maybe retire. Get away from the noise and the voices in my head. Hope you can go. Me? I got family. I'm stuck. I know what you mean. I truly do. But I go anywhere at this point. He abruptly turns back onto the main drag. The turnpike greets us like Christmas, all lit up in red and green, and Santa Claus takes our toll ticket, gifting me with a toothless grin, riding past Times Square. Ninth Avenue never looks so good. Even the street marionettes look cozy. The neighborhood seemed to envelop me into its steaming cauldron. At one point, I wanted to quiet Ninth Avenue like a dying dog. But now I felt the comfort of the familiar landmarks of abandoned cars and overflowing trash cans, soon to be picked clean. Dashing up four flights of stairs to my apartment, I turn on my TV, the screen which my roommate painted white. This city continued to whiz by at a kamikaze speed, and I sigh, having ascended out of one hell, yet back into another. I'm in a car, and a dog is driving. He gets mad at me because I didn't give him a dog treat. When he tries to bite me, I tell him I have his favorite toy instead. All I could think about was my coffin being slammed shut. No time for memories to flip by like in the movies I've seen. I was being snuffed out, dim lights on a foggy night. There was saliva dripping from the corners of his mouth. He was snarling like an angry horse and his eyes glaring, gleaming. My friend was in a jealous rage, but for no reason. I know you've been cheating on me. I can smell it. You're asking for this. His first punch caught me by surprise and I fell to the floor while well, he was on top of me like a wrestler. He pressed two fingers in my back, securing me in a half Nelson, and no pleading or fighting would undo his hold. Today, fingerprints still remain fossilized in my flesh like pebbles stuck in the sand. He was the man who was supposed to love me till death do us part, and we were... Halfway there, passing out, the world began to spin darker and with a quiver I felt further and further away. I was shutting down. Him thinking I was dead, 
he released his grip and went to the next room, probably to smoke more crack. Well, his unexpected release, my unexpected flight down the stairs, barefoot with no coat into the January snow. Frantically, I held down some cops who were, who were cruising the neighborhood, fearing my windpipe would collapse. I said, like I was a crack whore. They said, oh, we'll circle back around after we return our attack dogs. But they never did. So I walked to the hospital, face all black and blue, which told the whole story. My abuser had the nerve to follow me. He told the doctors that- He said he's your guardian and you tried to commit suicide. Why do you girls always do this to yourselves? Yes, they almost released me to him, but I calmed myself down and I explained in private. So why was the doctor mad at me? I waited until the abuser left and I went to sleep at my 24 hour workplace. I told the night manager that I'd fallen on some ice. He gave me such a pathetic look. The next day, after the abuser left for work, I changed the locks. That evening, there was a knock on the door. Please open up. That son of a b That man was with the cops in his, in his little accountant suit and tie. He claimed that I had stolen his rent money. Listen, miss, give the guys cash. Cause we don't want to be here all night. We don't want to be here all night. We don't want to be here all night. So I returned his half of the rent, which he probably went to buy more drugs. Then the stalking began. That's when I learned that restraining orders really don't work. My friend who didn't have an apartment at that time came to protect me. <laughs> protect me my ass. He got me pregnant. And told me what's that pregnant great i have an idea i'll keep the apartment and you can go and live with my mom and learn knitting knitting really he keep the apartment i lost the baby i was done but so was he the next day i kicked him out i realized he had taken my toilet paper and my Walkman, but I had taken back my power. That's what you get for dating artists. Con artists. A man is dancing with me. I'm turning, spinning wildly in his arms. We're entangled like lovers on top of a skylight which comes crashing down. I'm falling millions of miles upside down. Ocean, peace of mind, birds sing. I guess you kind of get used to that New York City thing with buildings piled high and the rudeness in the streets in the subways and stores, and believe me, I'm leaving a lot out. And the hustling, bustling, gray, exciting, be anybody, be nobody in New York. But here, every day is sunshine, and people are dressed in funny flat shorts. And outside my window, some bird is scolding a gardenia. And this morning, an orange woke me up, dropping from some tree. An orange just woke me up. Even the bus driver is so polite. He's singing on his announcing mic. You made me love you. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. And the elderly women are laughing because they know it's for them. And everyone has a suntan. And a lot of people work out, but nobody walks. And so many people enjoy alfalfa sprouts. And strangely, people smile. Well, it's 9.21 my time and 12.21 yours. And I was always thinking that I was uh, no one without you. But then I realized I was someone long before I ever met you. West Coast, I like you. There are large lakes which are bubbling with carbonated water. 
Under a microscope, I see the details of the whole world, and everything is sparkling clear. Hello? 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 A call back from, Bro from Broadway? Yes, 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 I will be there. Thursday? Yes. Thank you so, so, so much. Okay, bye. Tutu, you ready? Let's go. Well, I never made the audition. I mean, to start with, I went barefoot with a black unitard while others wore G-strings and high-heeled jazz shoes. And plus, my voice shook when I sang. But I will tell you, I never went back to bad neighborhoods, boyfriends, agents, or jobs. And this film is dedicated to all women and their journey. Thank you.